On, then, what do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's fully loaded, Howard. Leather seats, CD player, walnut trim. Mm -hmm. You're a bit warm there in the back, Eric. Don't worry. There you go. That's better for you. It's flipping freezing. Oh, you're cold. Shut it then. No problem at all. Just one touch and it's sorted. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how you manage with that windy one you've got on yours. And they do that all the time. Especially with a new car. But it's a nice car, okay? Really nice used car. Yeah, here we go. I mean, I, I, I'm presuming they knocked a bit off one of the doors not matching. What are you talking about? That back door there, it's, it's been replaced, you can tell. Where? Go on, you show me where that's different. Well, there. It's a different shade. No, that's your eyesight. It's metallic paint. In a certain light, it's two-tone. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, Cole. <laughs> You're just jealous. Jealous? What of a second-hand car? Oi, get back in the flipping car. <laughs> A couple of big kids arguing all the flipping time. This is one thing I won't miss next week. Why, Eric? Uh, what's happening next week, like? I'm retiring, aren't I? <gasps> no, are you? I didn't know that. Did you know that? Well, no one told me. Or me? You should have told us, Eric. We'd have organised a cake or something. Fancy that, him retiring after all these years, eh? Eric, you <laughs> fell in love, man. All right, all right, that's enough. <laughs> That <laughs> a <of> silly sucks. <laughs> On a budget, you know, Christmas coming up. Oh, it's been a good gaffer to you, Lance. All right, all right. Yeah. There's a pound. Hi, right, June. Hi. Yeah, yeah June. Quick question. What's the stupidest thing you can buy? Just drop it, will you? I can tell you that. Anything brand name. Baked beans, soup, you know, biscuits. That no frill stuff. Just as good. No, shut up, Gibbo. June, what's the one thing you buy that depreciates most in value in the first couple of years? I like a car. Well, a car. Thank you. You just told her to say that. Didn't need to tell her anything. Works in the office. Understands finances. Pathetic. <laughs> Come along, you lot. You need to stand around here all day. Let's get these bars out, shall we? See you later, then. Oh, yeah, first time.
Nearly half full. Working, delivering parcels. What have you done? More or less. Yeah, yeah I would love. Ah, uh, thanks. I've saved you a couple of mince pies. Ah, uh, thanks, Bernie. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't mind a couple of them. They're the last ones. And anyway, you've had enough. <laughs> Think you're in there, Howard? Ah, nah, not interested. Sold all my wild oats years ago. Wild oats? I don't remember any wild oats. Ah, you'd be surprised. A lot you don't remember. Well, I remember all the women you've slept with, Howard, because I've met both of them. One you married and the other was Karen Hodgkiss. And we know what happened there. What? She got off with you just before Christmas, so you'd buy her a present. And then she dumped you in the New Year. Yeah, well, that was a mutual decision. We both realised we were too young for a long-term relationship. She married Kenny Painter six weeks later. Could come as a bit of a shock, I can't you, that. Anyway... Can't sit around here all day. Where are you going? I'm going into town. What for? I'm looking for some Christmas lights. You can't put any more lights on that tree. It'd be a fire hazard. No, no. Look, I'm thinking of doing the outside of the house. You can get some fantastic stuff nowadays. Work out expensive, all that, you know. No, you can get all cheap up the market. Why don't you come with me, Howard? Have a look. Nah. To be honest, Cole, we're not going to bother much this year. Me and Pauline have talked it over and, um, well, we're going to go away for Christmas this year. Go away where? Lanzarote. You miserable get. That's horrible. Why can you not have Christmas, Howard? The Christmas dinner. Home film? Ten Quality Street? Yeah, well, that's it. That's why I don't want to get involved. All that greed and spending money. We just want to wake in the sun away from it all. She's really scarred you, hasn't she? Who? Karen Hodgkiss. Wow! They're fantastic! What about that then, eh? Yeah, very nice. Very nice? They're fantastic, aren't they, kids? Yeah, yeah. they're brilliant, and we're the only ones in the street who've got him. Well, of course we are. We always have the best Christmases in this house, don't we? Oh, yeah. Guess what I found out today? You are not going to believe this. What do you reckon Howard and your sister have got planned for Christmas, hmm? A week in Lanzarote. She told me ages ago. Go on inside, you two. Your tea's ready. I cannot understand it. How can anyone want to go away at Christmas? I know. I told her. I said you must be mad. Sitting on a beach when you could be stuck in a kitchen cooking and cleaning. Exactly. Lanzarote. Three pounds, huh? I don't think you can get three pound turkeys. I think they've sold you an oven ready budgie there, Gibble. No, no, it'll be okay. I mean, Mum and Dad don't like turkey, and Rosemary's not a big fan, so it's just for me and the kids. As long as you give them plenty of vegetables, which is good for them. You should spend Christmas with Howie. Come along, you two. How long do you want for lunch? Let's get these pounds out, shall we? Eric. Have you seen Howard? Howard's been called in to see Mr. Guthrie now. Come on, vamos! Hey, hey, you don't reckon I caught him, do you? You what? Afternoon tea breaks in the mortar, Chef. 
He might be right, Gibble. I warned him about that time and time again. So, we'll make an announcement tomorrow, shall we? Uh, yeah, OK, if, uh, if you say so, Mr Guthrie. Very good. Can you tell me what it was about then? What? You're meeting with Guthrie. Oh, that, um, Well, just, uh, With Eric leaving and that, they're just... What? Well, they're just talking to me about who's going to replace him. Why would they talk to you about that? Look, um, They wanted to know if I put my name forward for the job. Well, I hope you told them to stuff it. Why? Well, they have to have an internal candidate, don't they? It's just for show. But at the end of the day, they'll bring someone in from another depot straight over our heads. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, come on. They're not going to give it to you, are they? Eh? They have. What? Go through the offer at me today. I said I'd take it. He's going to make an announcement in the morning. Of course, you know what this is all about, don't you? What? what? Jackie, even when we were kids back home, he was always following me around trying to get into my gang. Well, when I first met you, it was all, can you get us a date with a sister? Ever since we've moved down here, he has been eaten up with jealousy. How would you work that? Well, come on. I've got the prettier wife, I've got the kids, I've got the nicer house, nicer car, you can't stand it. So now he's going to try and lord it over me at work. If he thinks for one minute I'm taking orders off him, he can forget it. Don't be silly and put them away for Christmas. No, I'm too angry. Only me. Hi, Dad, your tea's ready. Oh! Here he is. Judas. Go on, pull it out. It's right in the middle. All right, there it is. There it is. Buried up to the handle. It's the knife I'm talking about. In my back. Pull yourself together. Snap. <laughs> did you see our lights, Grandad? <laughs> yeah, I did. Just like Blackpool Illuminations. Can't wait for the electric bill. So, you knew all about this then, did you? They did ask me for my opinion, I. And I said I thought you'd do a very good job. Mm -hmm. And what about me? What about you? Well, what did you say when they asked you about me? They didn't. Oh, I see. Well, they wouldn't, would they? Because I'm not a suck-up. They know I wouldn't sell my mates down the river. Mates? What mates? My real mates. Ronnie, Billy Stewart, Gibbo. Listen, you and Howie have been mates all your lives. Yeah? Well, not anymore, we're not. Have you had a row with Uncle Howie? Uh, now, you're not to call him that anymore. It's Mr Scott now. He's one of the bosses. Well, he seemed fine about it. What did he say? Well, nothing really. He just went a bit quiet. I think Cole just wants different things out of life. He doesn't want the pressures at work. He's happy with his football, nice pint, kids. Yeah. Sis? Beautiful. Well, your management now. <laughs> so he's fine about it, is he? Come on. Uh, I think your dad might be in need of a lift as well. Hiya. Hiya. Hello. Just getting a few last minute bits for Christmas. I'm glad when it's all over. Me too. Oh, and you've just bought a bikini, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> 
So how's everything going with Harry? Go ahead. Yeah? Good. Listen, I'm really pleased for him, honestly, I am. Well, I'm glad somebody is. Mm. You know what Colin's like. It's understandable, in a way. I think he's been very childish. Well, he's just disappointed he didn't get a chance. Oh, come on. My Howard works harder, never takes time off sick, and doesn't spend two hours an afternoon sat in the motor chef. Plus, he's always been more of a crawler. Uh, you mean he knows how to be polite with people rather than winding them up all the time? Right, I'm going. Mm. Oh, sit down, please. I'm sorry. Look, it's just a stupid job. A couple more quid a week. It's not worth rowing about. Come on. You and the kids. You've all we've got. Please don't let's fall out. Excuse me. This is dead. No, you're unscrewing me, would you? <laughs> Rick. Thanks for that, guys. Why is Howie straight? I was talking to Mr. Guthrie. I didn't want to disturb him. Hey. I've told you. Go on. Uh, Mr. Guthrie, can I get you and your lovely daughter here a drink? Oh, thank you very much, young man. Mild and bitter, please. And a small scotch for me. Uh, uh, Mr. Scott? <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Uh, I'll have a lager. Go and help me. Go and help me. Go and help him. All right. Mild and bitter, lager and a whiskey, please. Yeah. Another 30 years and this will be you. Look, Howard, I'm sorry if I've been a bit... What? Well, you know, a bit... Well, pathetic. Infantile, immature. All right, stick it then. Hey, I've seen your lights. Yeah, they look good, really good. Just a bit of fun. Yeah, well, brighten the place up. You were right. So how's the new job? Oh, it's all right. More hours than I thought. We've done a lot of the paperwork, financial planning. Stuff Eric never got involved with. I saw that coming, that's why I made it very clear to Guthrie when Eric said he was leaving, I wasn't interested. Oh, really? Oh, I stuck in an office all day. Can't be doing that. Freedom of the open road. Fresh air. Water chef. I don't know. Anyway, what I was trying to say was... Well done, Howard. Cheers. Oh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just have your attention for a moment. Um... Go on, Eric, you're going to stand there all day. Well, let's get that speech out, shall we? <laughs> Thank you. All right, Jordy. I didn't really think about it. No, not at that price. Just have a couple of them white stars. Okie dokie. Listen, it's the last one there. Doing me for 20. Nah, she'd do a nut. Yes, she would. What are you doing, you? I thought I told you no more lights. They're not for me. Cheers, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Therefore, Pauline and Howard. I know they're going away, but I thought they might like them. Oh, that's really sweet. Well, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> Santa can't bring you a Man United shirt, can he? He supports Newcastle, everyone knows that. What the...? Ta -da! Wow, it's fantastic! When did you do all this? Oh, don't ask me. The Grinch suddenly went mad this morning. <laughs> what do you think? Not bad, eh? Very nice. 
I thought about what you said about getting to the Christmas spirit and that. I suppose they are quite pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do it, didn't you? What? Well, it's not enough just to copy me like you always do. You have to try and humiliate me in front of my kids. Go on into Auntie Pauline's, you two. Yeah, go and get a chocolate for Tria. What are you talking about? Well, come on, everybody! Ooh, look at Howard's lights! Oh, he's got a better job than me. He earns more money. Colin! Oh, Carl, it's Christmas. What happened to peace on earth and goodwill to all men? Stuff it. You want to turn this into a competition, Howard? It's fine by me. What are you talking about? I'm not competing with anyone. No, come on. You've got a better job, better car. So what's next, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps if it's all right with the bank manager, maybe you can afford to start having kids now. Colin, shut up! Well, mark my words, Jackie. They'll probably have four now, so he can say he's done one better than me. Nice one, Cole. Stars risen in the east. Joseph and the Virgin Mary arrive at Bethlehem. Can you please help us? I'm heavy with child and we've travelled many miles across the desert. I'm sorry, but we are full. Perhaps you could try the hey, inn if next door. If it's just gone up to the inn, they could have had a couple of girls who really are up the door. There was no room in the inn, so they had to have the baby in the stable with an ox and a... Uh, and a... Uh, And an ass. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you were brilliant, mate. Were you nervous? Nah, you just stand there and say stuff. Mm, the best thing in it. Apart from your sister, obviously. Brooke, mm. Brooke Armstrong. Hold baby Jesus a minute for me, Auntie Pauline. Come in, mate. Yeah, I'll uh, best be off. Mm. But you're going back in. Oh, yeah, I got a big meeting with Guthrie and the area manager. Right. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Jackie was wondering, you know, like, because we've not spent much time together this year, if you and Pauline fancied coming on a bit of a Christmas night out. You know, something traditional. Maybe a curry? Tonight. After the switching on ceremony? Jackie was wondering, was she? Well, no. Me as well. So, so what do you want, Howard? Do you... Want me to ask you out on a date like a bird? All right. Will you go out with me, Howard? <laughs> yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it, Pauline? Yeah, we'd love to. Dad said he'd babysit. Good. See you later, See you. love. Well done, kidder. Yeah. He's rushed off his feet at the moment. Oh, hi, Christmas. Busiest time of year. Absolute madness. You going back in, then? There's no point now, is there? When you say he irrationalised, Mr Buchanan... Martin. Martin. What you actually mean is, um, get rid, don't you? Oh, come on now. What he means is yes. It's the same all over the region. I've had this meeting four times in the last two weeks. Yeah, but these are mainly family men, Martin. The Christmas coming up. The hard workers, pucker lads. Well... Puckiness notwithstanding, I'm afraid two of them have got to go. Can you my Cummins pie? Hey, come on now, only three each. Puckiness notwithstanding? He actually said that? Yeah. He says I can write the poms. I hope you told him where to stuff it. No, I didn't. Oh, you're getting as bad as him. If you're management, Paul, you have to make tough decisions. That's what the salary and the company car's all about. All right. But these are your mates you're talking about, Howard. You can't just sack them. I know that. 
Do you think I know that, Pauline? Right. OK. Everyone's ready. Ladies and gentlemen, these lights will be on public display from now until the 6th of January. Not yet. Switching on and off automatically between the hours of 7pm and midnight. Come on, hurry up, it's cold. For tonight's ceremony, we are very, very lucky to have procured, at enormous expense, a very lovely lady. Pauline, hurry up! All right, plug it in, Jackie. Plug it in. Both plugs, like we're rehearsed. <laughs> £540 it's cost us this year, him and his lights, and that's the ones he tells me about. Wouldn't mind if he had another woman, at least to be a bit cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, yeah. Uh, firstly, if I may, they're not my lights, they're for the kids. <laughs> and secondly, what you don't understand, it's what's called a one-off capital expenditure. Ooh. Capital expenditure. Yeah, how it'll bear me out here. OK, I may have invested heavily this year, but you've got to weigh that up against the pleasure it's going to bring in the next 30 years because every Christmas I shall get them out and put them up again. <laughs> In fact, I'm not sure it's worth taking them down. Don't even <laughs> think about it. Yeah. How about you, Howard? Got any plans this year? What? Lights. Oh, no. We can't compete. Not this year. You've taken it to an all-new level. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, what she means is, as per usual, you've gone completely over the top. Over the top. Howard, please. No, oh, they're great. I mean, Jackie might be right, you know. All that expense. Maybe you should just be a bit more, um, you know, just... What? Well, you know, just more careful. I mean, I mean not just you. Everyone should be more careful. You know? Ah. You know, I'll, uh, I'll get the bill. Hey, no, yeah, don't be silly. We invited you. It's our treat, and I insist we split it 50-50 <laughs> right down the middle. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, the lads reckon we know what your meeting with Buchanan was all about. Do you? Oh, right. Increased profits. Christmas bonuses! <laughs> anyway. Fair play. I know you can't say anything. Asher, could we have our coats? And uh, Howard wants the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and see if Dad's all right. Oh, well, listen, you two, that was lovely tonight. Thank you. Can't remember the last time we went out and had a really good laugh. Hey, thought you were out all the time now, you know, hope and open. What, golf clubs and rotary suppers? Load of ponces making speeches. Well, you had some good <laughs> nights. What? I lit a fag before they toasted the Queen. You'd have thought I'd spat in the gravy boot. <laughs> nah, kids. See you tomorrow. Night, Howie. Night. It's a lovely motor, the three series. My dream car? That's oh, just a company car. No. You've worked hard for it, Howard. Credit where credit's due. Look, if you ever want to take her for a ride, just say the word. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Cheers. Hey, looking fantastic this year, the old lights. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe Jackie's right. Maybe they are a bit over the top. No, they're not. No, they're not, are they? No. Well, maybe just a bit. Maybe a tad. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> See you tomorrow, Howard. All right, mate. Hi, Dad. Hey, love. Hiya. Hey. <sighs> I felt terrible tonight. Sitting there, knowing what I know, and not being able to say anything. 
You don't think Colin will be one of the ones to go, do you? Oh, you know what he's like, Pauline. He's a good worker when he gets going, but he spends so much time asking about it. Oh, my God. What will they do? They've got three kids. Calm down. It might not come to that. I've had an idea. Something Colin said about capital expenditure. Go on, you go up. Okay. Don't be long. It's certainly an ingenious idea, Howard. Fire all the drivers, then re-employ them as owner drivers. We sell them the vans at a favourable price, then subcontract man and vehicle at an agreed daily rate. We cut down on running costs. Improved cash flow. What do you think, Len? Think the boys will go for it? I'm sure they will, Martin. They'll be their own boss. The harder they work, the more they learn. Aye, and the more they skive and go off sick, the less they learn. I can think of a few who won't be very happy with that. Yeah, but what's their option? Kick two of the mates out of a job. It's your party. If you think you can get this past the men, then I'm in. And if it works here, perhaps we can introduce it to the other depots. Well done, Howard. Very well done. I'm sorry, Mr G, but you've got to be having a laugh here, haven't you? All right, Gibbo, tell me exactly what it is you're not happy with. Well, you're sacking us and then trying to get us to buy a lot of second-hand vans off you. Uh, look, Gibbo, OK, you have to buy your van. But when you paid for it, it's yours. Well, it's mine now, isn't it, without paying for it? No, it's the company's. But you're not really buying it. You're, you're actually being paid to buy it. And you've got enough guaranteed work here to pay for its upkeep. Yeah, but I'm still paying out. Oh. I smell a rat here, fellas. There's no bloody rat. It's me you're talking to. You're not some suit from head office. Me, I would. Can't you see how mutually beneficial this could be? That's just managerial gobbledygook. Oh, is it? Oh, well, maybe you'd prefer the alternative, which is, let me spell it out for you, to you lot on the door! Is that plain enough English for you? It's just trying to bully us now, lads. Oh, grow up, Gibbo! All right, gentlemen. I was worked very hard on these proposals. When you've had a chance to read them properly overnight, we'll talk some more. We'll be speaking to you individually over the next couple of days, right? Back to work, lads. Hey, Colin. Thanks for your help. I didn't say anything. No, exactly. You never said a word. What did you expect me to say? Oh, come on. That lot of pig ignorant. You know this makes sense. What was all that old pals act the other night? Look, what do you want from me, Howard? Do you want me to lie down while you walk all over us? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I want. I sat up all night thinking of ways to walk all over you, not save your job. Oh, it's my job you've saved now, is it? Oh, I see. Well, think about it, Cole. Buchanan's talking about making people redundant. Now, when it comes to finding the dead wood... Well... What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Take it any way you want it. I'll tell you what, why don't you think about it this afternoon? when you're sitting in the mortar, Chef. Should have smacked him one, that's what I should have done. Right in the mouth of smug punts. <laughs> Trying to make out was all about me, my job. Been there longer than anyone else. He was only doing his job. If it wasn't him, it'd be someone else. You no know cake in this house, Jackie? No. You should have seen the sneer on his face. Oh. He called me Deadwood. I should have smacked him right in the mouth of two his git. Not one word of support after all the years we've known each other. Well, what did you expect? Colin's not going to support you against his workmates, is he? I mean, this is what you wanted, Howard. To be the boss. Be top dog. You know what? You're absolutely right. <laughs> I've actually read this. Yeah, of course I have. Well, the bit about claiming back expenditure against tax. Well, not all of it. Well, it seems to make a lot of sense to me. 
That's not the point. Could it have been you made redundant? No. No, well, in theory, I suppose, but that's not the point. No, I think it is the point. I think the point is that you could have lost your job. And so could some other poor bloke with a family a week before Christmas. Howard seems to have stopped that happening. I think you should be thanking him. Thanking him? I'm not thanking him. Why not? Because he's such a... Such a what? Such a mate. Such a good boss. Such a job saver. All right. All right. All right. I don't know. I've always been the leader of us two. And there he was, standing there, all confident with these plans. It just wasn't Howard. Well, things have changed, love. The bottom line is you should be grateful. Uh, what are you going to do tomorrow? Uh, all right, all right. I'll sort it out with him. Flipping nails on you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what was that for? I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Possessed. Said he just wanted to put a few lights up. Four o'clock this morning he came to bed. And when I saw it, well, I was in tears. What has he done to my beautiful house? I mean, it looks like... Mine? Yeah. It's like the Americans and the Russians in the 60s. I mean, we're not even here for Christmas. Why would he want to do something like this? Well, I think it might be Colin's fault. Oh, no, 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 he did it all by himself. No, I mean this work thing. I think Colin might have upset him and this is his way of getting back. It'll escalate, you'll see, just like the missiles. Each side vying to outdo the other. And he's ruined the holiday. What do you mean? He's only announced he's changed the flight so we can come home early. Why? I was on the phone this morning to this bloke, David, from the Rotary Club. And they've arranged to bring a group of disabled kiddies over to see the lights. The day after Boxing Day. Well, you're not due back till the 28th. Exactly. But apparently they've got the local papers here, telly, the lot. I just don't know what to do. Like you were all over again. Dad, shut up! Rosemary went through to me last night and apparently we're not going to be any worse off. In fact, we could be making an extra 15, 20 quid a week. 
And when you add that with the money the kids earn from the paper round, well, we'll have an holiday this year. What did Jackie say? Well, Jackie? What's it got to do with her? Abyss, uh, make a move. Now then, Tina's gone. She's not be expecting a tip, will she? Right. Full load this afternoon? Yeah, of course you have. All right, for them sitting in the office drinking tea? We're the ones doing all the donkey work, eh? Yes, hello, Margolis Electronics. Yes, my name's Colin Armstrong. Oh, hi, Morris. Yeah, that, uh, that quote you gave me. That includes lay band delivery, does it? Nice as an extra day by the pool, would it be? Hey, come on, don't be selfish. Imagine the look on them disabled kids' faces. It'll all be worth it. Mm. It's a bit of a downer, eh? Having to go back to that estate. It's not an estate. It's a clause. I was, uh, I was having a little chat with uh, Mark and Angus on the hotel tennis court. Yeah, they all live out. Big detached houses, bit of land. They haven't let their old lives hold them back. Maybe we should uh, start looking. Well, you can if you like. What's the matter now? Look, you spoil my holiday, you are not going to spoil the rest of my life. What do you mean? You're not going to drag me off to live in the middle of nowhere with a load of snobs. I'm happy where I am with my family and my friends. Yeah, but we've made new friends. Angus and Beverly have invited us over. They live in Bristol! Maybe we should spread our wings a bit. Uh, it's, uh, just aim it, next one on the right. Well, listen, let's talk about it later. Let's just enjoy this evening, eh? For the kiddies. <laughs> Don't believe it. Uh, just stop it, you mate. Right. Get in our house now and get them lights on quick. Well, it's all about being able to put something back into the local community. And just to see the smiles on the kiddies' faces, well, that's enough for me. David! David! Oh, Howard! Hey, now, this is a triumph. It really is magnificent! Hey, yeah, there's been a little bit of a balls up in just there. Uh, yeah, you're actually in the wrong place. Well, no, I... I no, 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 right. this is where we want to be, next door. Oh, any time now? <laughs> oh, there we are, you see? Look at that. Right, well, we'll, uh, well, we'll pop over a bit later. I'm having a bit of a chat with your friend Colin. He's very keen on joining the Rotary Club. You what? He can't join the Rotary. You all right, Howard? Have a nice holiday. Uh, can I have the... Just have your attention, please, everybody. So you just look over here. <laughs> ah, here we are. Oh, fantastic. Get some shots of the kids' faces, go on. Right. OK. You're actually in the wrong place. It's the next house, OK? Yeah. All right, kids, not long now. <laughs> this one isn't safe. Whoa, 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 stop! Stop! Over there. Get them off here! Get them off! Drive on! Helen! Let go! Get out of the way. Calm yourself down, Howard. You're making an absolute fool of yourself. I'm me. I'm making a fool of myself. What's that? Hey, oh, that's not oh, Christmas. What's that all about? Here we are. That's right. Over there. Make way for them, please. Uh, you're not having these disabled kids because they're mine. I'll take this one. Uh, David, if you could get the rest, please. And um, how, how are that? I don't think they'd quite like to see the fairground. No, they wouldn't. Uh, camera crew, this way, please. Uh, come on, son. Come and have a ride on the big wheel. Uh, he doesn't want a ride on the big wheel, thanks. He does. No, he doesn't. No, come on, then. Oh, 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 me, this is the most humiliating night of my life. Not mine. Oh! Days 
lost to sickness and injury down by 12%. Mechanical failure down 28%. Good, good. Figures for last month are looking good. Keith, 147 deliveries. Gordon, 138. Gibble, 122. They're all holding the numbers. Colin, 82. Thanks, June. I'll, uh, I'll go through a You all right? You look worn out. Oh, no, I'm fine. I, it's just the weather, I think. Stream me back somehow. Oh. Oh, the lovely. You shouldn't go buying him stuff, you know. Especially now you're not working. Oh, it's all right. What's the matter with you? You look knackered. I've not been getting much sleep. Oh, I know what you mean. Me neither. It's this weather. It's dead muggy, isn't it? Well, it's partly the weather and partly... What? We've been at it like rabbits. <laughs> We've been really going for it this year. Oh. Well, don't tell Colin, will you? I always made me promise. That's why I've given up my job. He said, I don't want you having any stresses or strains. <laughs> Just concentrate on making babies. Oh, it'll happen. But it's been so long. When I go in these shops and I see all these beautiful kiddie clothes. Oh, Do you come here? What the hell's that? What's going on? Oh, hello. Thought you were picking the kids up. No, Dad's picking them up. What's going on? Nothing. Oh, for God's sake. You've got to plan ahead. These blogs are busy already. It's very lucky to get them. Hey, yeah. What are you up to? Nothing. Nothing at all. OK. Well, I'll see you later, Jackie. See you later. Bye. Bye. Careful. Don't want her sniffing around, giving him ideas. You promised me you weren't going to go mad this year. I'm not going mad. People have come to expect something a little bit special from me. And you can bet your life he's got big things planned. <sighs> hey, June. Where's he going? Going home, he's got a bad back. What, from sitting in a chair? She tried working for a living. Hey, June. Has Howard asked you about any storage facilities? Empty warehouses, anything like that? You know, somewhere he could hide something big. No. Ah, but would you tell me if he had? Terry, that sounds great. You do know, don't you, that it's not just a one-off? Oh, no, I need this to happen every night for 12 nights. How will you see? That's the challenge. Oi, you. You've got another call on our pay form. I told you my boss don't like you giving that number out. Terry, could I put you on hold? Can you do this at all? No, I can't. So, Terry, can you get me a price? Wednesday by the latest. Because I have to start rigging next week. OK. Who is it? It's a Mr Margolis. About some fluorescent Aladdin. Ah, yeah, forgot about that. Oh, I don't know if that'll clash with the fireworks. Tell him I'll call him back. Sorry, won't keep you long now. Aladdin. Cheers, Tony. Best of all, mate. insulation should be fixed to the brackets above the earth conduit. Well, this is what I mean. What brackets? I don't give you any brackets. You two, you go down, OK? See you soon. You off out? Yeah. Going to Dad's. Mm -hmm. Time you coming back? That's well, up to you, isn't it? Hmm? It's the end of the morning from the building society. 
Ah, right. I was going to talk to you about this. You swine. That was for their future. For when they were 18, a nice nest egg, you said. So they could buy a car or go off around the world or something. And you've stolen it. No, no, hang on. It was just sitting there and it's not working for them. The interest rate's rubbish. Shut up! Just shut up! I was going to put it back. Oh, yes, you are going to put it back. In fact, the only thing that's going to stop me from walking out of here tonight is if you promise to put back every penny you've taken from that account. Of course. And you gather up all this crap and you drive me down the dump with me. Oh, come on, Jackie. I can't throw everything out. It's worth hundreds. Thousands. What are we worth? Me and the kids, eh? Jackie. Jackie. Colin. Colin. Come on, Jackie. He's been rubbing my nose a bit all year and I just want to beat him. And that'll be it, I promise. What are you talking about, beat him? He's not fighting you. You just can't cope with him having the better job and the better money. So you've made up this competition that you think you're going to win. But it doesn't even exist, except in your head. You're paranoid, man. Oh, I see. Paranoid. It's obvious whose side you're on. Yeah. I'm on my side. Mine and my kids. Sort yourself out, Colin. All right? How are you feeling? Oh, all right, yeah. Back feeling much better today. I'm nervous. A little bit. But I just think if there's something wrong with me, I want to know so we can start to do something about it. Hey. Mr. Mr. Scott, please. Still at it then, are you? Yeah. Nearly there. The kids are going to be really excited this year. I think they'd be more excited if they could have their parents back together. I've been over there, I've spoken to her. What am I supposed to do? Take it all down, lad, like she asked you to. Oh, come on, Eric, it's only a few lights. A few lights? Listen to yourself. This is exactly what I said. America and Russia all over. What do you mean? The arms race. The build-up to mutual destruction. But your problem is, he's America. Unlimited budget. You, you're Russia. Bankrupting yourself in pursuit of folly. Well, maybe you're right, but what can I do? I've got to show everyone once and for all that this is my thing and I can do it better than anyone else. But you've got no to beat, lad. He's not doing anything this year. Come on, Eric, think about it. What was the most important thing about the arms race? Secrecy. And that's where he's got the advantage over me. You can afford to have it all assembled at a hidden location, then have it trucked in at the last minute when it'll be too late for me to react. That's the game he's playing! I promise you. Are you sure? I've done all I can. I've asked around. But they're not going to betray him, are they? They're all in this together. You could help. How do you mean? Yeah, no one will suspect you, will they? The loving mm. granddad popping round for a cup of tea. It's the perfect cover. Now, all you have to do is look for any secret documents or receipts, or any little notes he's made, and report back to me. You're cracking up, you are.
might find you here. Right. Uh, sorry, but I just wanted to check something with you, Jackie. What was that word you used about me? Paranoid, wasn't it? Unjustified sense of persecution. Right, OK. Well, I just wanted to show you this, actually. It's a receipt from a company called K. Lee's. Storage facilities, lockups, and that. Now, why would Mr. Howard Scott, manager of one of the largest depots in the area, want to take out extra storage space from somewhere else? Eh? Unless he's got something that he wants to keep a secret. Now, that's the question, eh? What has he got? What has he got that he doesn't want me to know about? Cancer. He's got cancer. We were just supposed to get the results of these tests, you know, to find out why he wasn't getting pregnant. And then this bloke started talking about some problems with the blood tests. And at first I thought it was me. And then he started talking about testicles. And I thought, why are they talking about these testicles? I just couldn't take it in. And I kept saying to him, no, he's all right now. It's just a bad back. And then, and then the next thing I knew, they took him away and they told me to go up and get some stuff. I should be in there with him now. It's OK, it's OK. Finish your tea, calm down. <laughs> Colin's with him. So which one is it, then? The left one. Look, Col, I want you to do something for me while I'm in here. Sort things out with Jackie. Yeah. You know you've gone completely mad with these lights, don't you? I suppose so. Just tell me one thing, though, will you? Why did you book a storage unit at Kayleigh's? Overflow from the depot. It's Christmas. All oh, right. I have been a prat, haven't I? Well, to be honest, I think it's all tied up with work and... And me taking it badly when you got promoted, and me being a bit, um, yeah, I don't know. Jealous? If you like. I would have preferred envious. Of what? Oh, the company car, extra money, you know, the lifestyle. Listen, Colin, let me tell you something about jealousy. The car, the pay rise, the private health care, the new conservatory, the holiday, everything. They can have it all back if I could just have what you've got. What? Kids, you big dope. That's all we've ever wanted. You know, there's not a single day I don't look at you and the kids and think you're the luckiest sod I've ever met. Right, Mr. Scott, it's uh, time for your shave. Oh, uh... Oh. Oh, right, well, uh, yeah, let's make a move. Yeah, just, yeah. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Cole, the reason I got that extra storage at Kayleigh's, oh. you know that big unit at the back of the depot? That's where I've been keeping all my lights. I knew it! I knew it! I did! <laughs> Be as rough as you like, sweetheart. Go on. I'll just go straight in. Oh, sorry. How is he? He's fine. Jackie. Hey, Jack. He's all right. 
He's got Sky in there, the lucky cat. <laughs> Word it spread, the cancer. The word it's got into his bones and and then what? What? He can't die, Jackie. <laughs> Sorry, I've been, you know. It's okay. Quite pleased then. Yeah. They'll give him some more tests next month, but touch wood. <laughs> You'll be all right. Touch wood. What are you touching that for? It's plastic. It's walnut burr. <laughs> What's all this about? What's going on? Well, it's a special occasion. It's a big switch on tonight. Yeah, they've all come to see me, lights. I thought you put a block on all this, Jackie. Yeah, well, I said just one last year. Do you mind if I go straight in, Cole? Huh? Cole? Whoa, we're here now. Come on, let's have a look. We've got me such a misery, God. Yeah, but... Oh, come on. <coughs> all right, lad? Hi. How are we? I think I just had life-threatening surgery, would you? Right, ladies and gentlemen, I won't keep you too long, because, well, it's cold enough to freeze the air. No. <laughs> anyway, I'd just like to thank everyone who's pulled together in what's been a very, very difficult time for me, getting all this sorted. So I'd just like to ask a very special friend of mine to step forward and do the honours. Well done, Gibbo. Uh, yeah. Right, let's count them down. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Oh, so fantastic. Oh, yeah, they're great. Yeah. Do you mind if we make a move? We'll Going dolls. Oh, no. Welcome home, Uncle Howard. Yeah, welcome home. What's this? Switch it on. Go on. Switch it on. Oh. You're 
sell yourself. You'll have to go to the top this next year. Yeah, well, I sort of promised Jackie that this would be the end of it. Oh, well, fair enough. Although I have got my eye on something I saw in a magazine from America. It's a big spaceship. No way. Spaceship? A spaceship. Smoke and everything. It's even got aliens in it. Oh, it's a massive rig, but... Well, you don't have to worry about that. I'll be eight. I hope you won't. Have. God willing. Of course you will. You and me. Together. Thanks. Come on, everyone. Hi, come on, big smiles.